Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another workflow walkthrough. Today we're going to take a look at some autumn color images and I'm going to do my basic processing and I'm also going to experiment a little bit with some ways to change the colors in images using a couple of the different modules in Darktable as an example. So this is the time of year in uh, northeastern part of the United States where the trees start to show off their lovely colors as we go into autumn. And those can make some uh, nice and, and beautiful images to look at. Um, I've taken uh, a few images, of course, and I also like to experiment a little bit this time of year with some abstractions of autumn images. And uh, sometimes I think those end up with more interesting and uh, more attractive results. So as an example, we'll take a look at this image here. This is certainly a, a, a nice image, if you will, uh, you know, diagonal lines, some beautiful color against a dark background with a little bit of sunlight bleeding through the skies and the image is nice and sharp and all that. And, you know, it certainly conveys the, the season, <clears throat> but, you know, honestly, it's a little bit cliche and, and, and doesn't really uh, have much artistic input into it other than my choice of uh, framing the photograph and capturing the exposure. So uh, one of the things that I like to do, particularly with autumn leaves, is is make intentional double exposures where one of the exposures is in sharp focus and a second exposure on the same scene is done out of focus or a very soft focus, which gives sort of a glow to the scene. And I take those exposures handheld hand because I'm not looking for exact alignment. Uh, and I usually experiment with different levels of out of focus. So as an example here, we have two images that are, uh, as I just discussed, where one image was taken in, one in focus and a second image was taken out of focus. This one was with the second image being... I'll call it slightly out of focus. Obviously, it's quite out of focus compared to the main image. Uh, but the next image is actually with the second image being extremely out of focus, like very large blurs. And in this case, I, I definitely prefer the first one. The second one looks almost like, um, like there was some sun flare or something, but it's very low contrast. Whereas this image, you still have a lot of nice contrast in the leaves, but they've got this beautiful glow around them from the out-of-focus background image. So this is the one that I'm going to work with today, uh, and then we'll take a look at another image. I've also made a few double exposures where both images are sharp, uh, but with a little bit of a zoom in between them. Let's take a look at uh, these images in the darkroom. So I'm going to open this one up. And there's not a whole lot that I'm going to want to do to this. So I'm going to start out by uh, increasing the exposure slightly. By default, I have Filmic and Exposure uh, turned on. I'm using the, the Filmic workflow. Uh, dynamic range in this case doesn't really demand Filmic, but I, I like the results anyway. So the exposure, however, is still a little bit a little bit low. I have quite a bit of headroom here in my histogram. So I'm going to go ahead and start increasing that exposure uh, until I start to push some of my highlights up against the, the edge there and get a nice bright glowing image. So I'm at about one and, a third, uh, one and a third stops. And if I turn on my overexposure indicators, um, I don't really have, still don't have anything overexposed. I've got a tiny little bit of underexposed areas here in the sh deep, deep shadows. But honestly, that's exactly what I want. So... Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to do anything to correct that. So I'm. I'm liking this image already. I'm going to um, take a look now at the contrast equalizer and see if I can bring up some of the details, uh, the finer details in the sharp parts of the image. First, uh, we'll drag this end of the curve up a little bit. Zoom in on this and take a look. And you can see when I look in here that, you know, the very sharp focus on the initial image, but you have this glow glow behind it, uh, which is the, absolutely the look I was after. I don't want to do anything to change that. I will see what happens here when I pull up on the coarse side of the... Of the oh, that's pretty neat, too. That gave me a, 
uh, a nice look. It sort of concentrated the look of that a little bit. Maybe I went a little too far on it. I'll pull it down just a skosh. Uh, turn this off. That's the original image. Turn it on. Just a little bit punchier. Push the darks down a little bit in here. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Uh, let's take a look at the color balance and take a look at the overall contrast. Set the contrast fulcrum automatically and just see what happens here if I turn the contrast up. I get a little bit more brightness on the leaves and a little bit more darkness in the deepest shadow areas. And I don't want to overexpose anything in the leaves. And I've just started to do that, so I'm going to back down on this contrast until I see those uh, overexposures go away or nearly go away. One or two spots here I'm not too concerned with. Let me see what that looks like if I zoom in on it. Yeah, I mean, this is overexposed in one channel probably, uh, but Filmic has done a really nice job and, and there's no ugly looking blocky highlights here. So I'm I'm quite happy with that. That's that's looking good overall. Now I can, uh, of course, juice up my saturation here. You know, being an autumn image, it, it wouldn't be an autumn image if you didn't go a little bit too crazy with with saturation. I like what it's doing there. It's really bringing the greens up so there's more contrast between the greens and the yellows. And uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that image. So honestly, this is an image now I would leave it alone. I would use it as it is. Maybe, uh, if anything, apply a slight vignette, but I don't really see a need to. I've got a natural vignette here with the way the image was framed. Uh, so I don't really feel like I need to apply a vignette or even crop this image. I'm very happy with the strong diagonal of the color and the glow all around. So we'll let this go. <clears throat> what I will do, though, is make a copy of this image because I want to play a little bit with the colors. So let's go into the Duplicate Manager here, and we're going to uh, create a duplicate with the same history stack to start with. All right. Now I'm looking at my duplicate image. I'm going to leave everything as it's been so far alone, and I'm going to play around with a couple of different methods of adjusting the color in this image just to see what we can accomplish. So let's first go into the color lookup table module. Let's try that one first. So I want to try to shift the oranges and the yellows in this image more towards the red. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my color picker and I'm going to pick this area here and my red versus green, I'm going to push towards the red. And my blue versus yellow, I'm going to take the yellow out of the image by sliding it towards the blue. No, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to push it more towards the red. Now, I got a little bit crazy here. I just wanted to push it far and see what my... Uh, results would look like. But if I just am a little bit more uh, easy on it, and maybe drag the brightness down a touch. Yeah, it's not very natural looking. Let's try resetting this guy here. And let's take a look at this and get a little bit more subtle here by using my scroll wheel and adjusting this yellow and adjusting the blues towards yellow. So I'm getting a little bit more punch. Let's turn it off. There we have yellow. Turning it on. I get a little bit more towards the orange side. And now let's let's play with the greens and let's see what happens when we play with the greens. So I'm going to go in here to the greens. Okay, and we're going to drive those greens towards the red. And again, this is really just an experimentation. I just want to see what uh, what's possible here. And uh, you can see my greens are are turning more and more orange. In particular, I'm getting a lot of effect on the on the out of focus overlay image, which I like. I think that's uh, that's pretty interesting. I think that's 
boy, having done that, I think I'm going to come back here and maybe dial out a little bit of this change that I made to the yellows and let those go back a little bit more yellow because I don't think they need to be orange if the rest of the image is going orange. We'll go into this one and just let's try dialing back towards the blue a little bit and see what happens. Oh, that's nice. That's giving me a slightly purple looking uh, background. Very, not exactly subtle, but certainly a nice artistic impression of the scene. So let's turn this, uh, let's actually, instead of turning it on and off, uh, let's come back here to the contrast equalizer module and we'll take a snapshot. And then we'll go up to the color lookup table. And so we have the before image and the after image. Now, the before image is certainly more true to life, uh, but the after image uh, certainly conveys more of an autumn m mode, does it not? I mean, the oranges uh, make a big difference. So, so there we use the color lookup table to make a couple of color modifications. And I, I like that. I, I think that's a pretty neat image. Um, you know, whether you like it or not is a matter of personal taste. That's okay. But... Uh, you know, I think the I think the manipulated color image is gonna would get more of a reaction from people. It's gonna generate a little bit more emotion than the more subdued image that I originally came out of the camera. So let's turn the snapshot off. Okay, and we're gonna go back to the duplicate manager, and I'm going to go to the original, and I'm gonna make another duplicate of the original. All right, so now we're going to use the color zones module to change the colors of this image. So I'm going to come into color zones and again I want to see where I'm at so I'm gonna take my color picker and pick these yellows and the color zones is, is pretty easy. I can take this yellow now I've got lightness, saturation, and U. I want to go into the U tab. And if I take this yellow and drag it towards red, I change the amount of that. I change that color pretty easily. I overdid it a little bit. Pull it back up. If I think I overdid it, I can also just dial back the mix so that I only get a little bit of that mix or a lot of that mix. And, of course, I can reset and get back to where I was. <coughs> Let's take a look at this again. Let's go into our greens here. Do a little bit like I did on the previous one. So now I see my greens are right here on this line. I'm going to drag this point over to that green and I'm gonna pull that green towards my oranges and reds. And I'm getting a similar effect to what I had before. Maybe a little bit more subtle. Um, maybe a little bit more realistic in a way. The greens still look green, but they have a bit of a orange to yellow cast to them. But it's still giving me a more autumnal look, and I can make another instance of this and adjust the, the yellows if I want to, or I can just play around with this. Uh, you know, I have some some blues here in the background that I might want to, to uh, get a little crazy with. I can take those blues and I can drive them up into the into the reds and we can see what what happens there in the background not a whole lot let's try the color picker here see what the color picker says this is okay well see that's actually not blue at all so uh, my eyes deceived me let's let's get rid of this and let's drag this one back let's reset this entire module okay and do our color picker again. I have it there. I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to pull this down towards the oranges and the yellows a little bit. I do like the way that looks. I can get crazy. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Let's pull it up here. Oh, yeah. See how that... <laughs> it took a second for it to process there, but it, 
it got pretty pretty wild for a moment. We're going to pull this back up to just introduce a little bit of orange into the image. I'm going to make another instance of this. And in that instance, I'm going to take a look at these oranges now. And I'm going to desaturate them a little bit. So I'm going to look at the saturation tab rather than the uh, U tab. So I won't change the color, but I just want to pull the saturation down a bit so that it doesn't quite look so clowny. And I think that's pretty good. If I turn that off, turn that back on. It's a minor change, but I like it. I think it's uh, worth doing. Let's close the duplicate manager here. Uh, let's take a look at this. So let's go back to the color balance module where we made our first changes. We'll take a snapshot, show that, go up to color zones, and we have before and after. Quite a difference. Quite a difference. Just by using the color zones modules, you can uh, turn summertime into fall if you want to. So that's it. I think I just wanted to have a little short video today and talk a little bit about uh, at least two different ways that you can change the color in your images. Um, I hope that was useful to some of you. And yeah. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.